Farm Gate Cafe and welcome to the inaugural Farm Gate Cafe National Poetry Award. Woo! And to the <laughs> thank you. And the opening event of the Cork International Poetry Festival. And it's lovely to see you all here. It's a very exciting night for us. Um, and I'm not going to say much and I'm going to say very little about poetry. I leave that to the experts. But just to say that Farm Gate have had we're here 25 years in Cork, and over 25 years we have forged great friendships with the writers and poets of Cork and around Ireland and even further afield. Um, and looking into the audience here tonight, I see many uh, faces that are with us many days a week. And we, I, I know I'm speaking on behalf of Kay and the team here, we really appreciate the friendships that we have developed um, of your support and how it really enriches our lives here in the cafe. So thank you um, to all the writers and to the poets. And I'm going to hand over to Pat now. Well, <clears throat> this new award is exclusively for books by poets resident in Ireland. There are a number of uh, awards for books of Irish poetry, but this is one, this is the only one for poets who actually live in the country. And as such, um, it's not um, exclusively for poets of Irish nationality. Um, this award is different from any other, but it's exclusively for books of new work by poets living in Ireland books translated into English for the first time are also considered, and this year included works originally written in Irish and Galicia. We had three judges, uh, one based in Cork, Alvin E. Garvey, uh, we had one based in Paris, Kim Lee Verdon, and we had Morris Verdon based in London. They all uh, had to consider over 40 titles, um, they had to score the their top 10 favourites without consulting with each other. Um, I've been, I've managed book awards where I've seen juries swayed by one strong personality on the day. And this is, this is, this is the sort of award that goes by the Irish proportional representation voting system. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's one of the fairest ways you can decide how, how, how to pick a winning book. Um, so, and the winner is Leanna Sullivan's book. <laughs> and there were six other titles that emerged as highly commended when, when all of the scores of the three judges were aggregated. And, and they are Orpheus by Theodorgan, published by Daedalus Press. Uh, the Last Straw by Tom French, published by the Gallery Press. The White Silhouette by James Harper, published by Carcanet. Uh, Notions by John Kelly, published by Daedalus. Love the Magician by Maiden Guckian, published by Arlen House. And This One High Field by Michelle Sullivan, published by the Gallery Press. They were the highly commended books. Um, Morris Reardon said of the winning title, Leanna Sullivan is possessed of a haunting lyric voice which, in a quarter of an hour, draws us into an area of surface tension where personal crisis, a husband stricken and then recovering from a deadly illness, interacts with our experience of the non-human. Dawn, a poem that gives the book a particular title and focus, captures in its evocation of the dawning world the here to not here of becoming. And as readers, we are given access throughout to that dimension between the mundane and the mythic that normally eludes articulation, but here finds expression in limpid, precise poems. At once tender, <coughs> exploratory, and grace-filled, this finely orchestrated collection attests the wholeness of natural life and resonant with folkloric wisdom it reawakens the spirit to a fresh sense of the mystery and precariousness of our world. It is an astonishing 
achievement. Mm. Now, <coughs> we're, we'll be lucky to have the opportunity to hear <coughs> Leanne read <coughs> at more length at the festival next Saturday, but Alvin. she's going, Leanne, yeah, and she's going to be reading with Alvin E. Garvey, and, um, but Leanne's going to just give a short sample reading from the book just now. Thank you. It was when Pat, um, when Pat Ronian told me, and um, I do want to thank now, the, the Munster Literature Centre, Pat and James, the judges, Alva, and Kiana and Morris, and last but certainly not least, Kay and Rebecca and the Farmgate Cafe. I'm so, so grateful for this award and for what I consider an overwhelmingly generous sponsorship of the poems I've just written and of the work of future recipients. Both Kay and Rebecca have always been so supportive of their local poets and so welcoming of the blowing poets who come in uh, during, the, during the festival. Um, the farm gate feels so much like home to many of us and especially to myself and Andrew, this is my husband, Andrew. Um, seven years ago, Andrew and I got married and we had our wedding reception up here in this room. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry, out there. <laughs> um, we had our, our wedding reception up there, so we came out of the registry. We got married on a Friday and we kind of told our families on a Wednesday, so his family had no time to come from Canada. And mine barely had time to come from Vera, but they did. Yeah. And our, our party of 20, uh, I thought, it, I'm a vegetarian, but I still thought it would be cool to walk through you know, butchers and things like that on my wedding day. And nobody would have really known I got married. I just got married, so I was wearing blue. Not like this, but I was wearing blue. And we came up here and out there, and uh, party of 20, 21. And we looked across. And there was Jerry and Pat sitting over here <laughs> having their lunch. And I had my phone on me, and Jerry texted me and he said, Did you just get married? And I texted him and I said, Yep. And he told me later, I think this is this, you can correct, no, don't correct, don't talk to me after that. <laughs> he, um, he texted Billy to say, At Leanne's wedding. And Billy texted back, I believe. Are you at it or are you looking at it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that is, yeah. Oh, was that true? Is that actually? Yeah. Are you at it or are you looking at it? So we had um, just such a special, special day with all of my family, none of Andrew's family, but um, uh, Eamon O'Carrigan, to whom the book is, is dedicated, and his wife Mary and Mary Green and Ken and yeah, it was amazing. And Matt, yeah. Um, and then a year later, um, Andrew, my um, husband, my fantastic husband, did become very, very unwell. A lot of you probably already know the story, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through it again. But he was, he was very, very sick, and um, uh, while he was in CUH, I was still teaching on Tuesdays um, for UCC. Um, my classroom was quite near town; it was the archaeology building, and um, during the break. Um, that I'd give the class, there were three-hour sessions, and during the break I'd go <laughs> into the farm gate to find some poet that I'm sure would be up here, it's usually Jory, um, or Matthew Sweeney, um, and I just wanted to have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a break and would run back to my... I was either a fast runner or they were very long breaks, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and uh, so, and, and at the time I was wearing Andrew's uh, wedding ring and a chain around my... Uh, neck and it was just I felt um, I had so much faith in that day you know up here the atmosphere that you created for us and and um, and you know that it, that we would come through and we did it wasn't um, such a sad story at all and my book sort of sums up how I feel about my husband and um, I love that we are back here again 
celebrating um, not just our, our story, um, but the community that you have nurtured and fed over the years and that you continue to nurture and nourish. And I just want to thank you both from the bottom of my heart. So I won't keep you, I, I, I was told not to keep not to keep it up because I myself and Alva are reading on that on Saturday. So I'll just read three shortish poems. And I want to thank my husband, um, Andrew, for, I mean, you know, a lot of these poems are written about um, what happened to him. And, you know, he doesn't remember a lot of it, but he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't want it. Um, which is great, like, yeah. Um, so just to say thank you to Andrew for allowing me to read these poems. Um, so this is called Morning Poem. and. Um, Andrew had very little memory left when he came home from hospital, but it started to come back when he started working in uh, the garden. But he had uh, your vocabulary was quite mixed up, and um, you called I think you called the, you did call the garden Byzantium. Um, so it was it was a kind of a fallen empire by the time you came, by the time you came home. Morning poem. Of course, memory began in the garden, going out to it so early that first morning home. The little bells of the dawn, not yet too loud or too deep. The world around him still only half asleep. O oh, Byzantium, he thought, fingering the spires of the foxgloves and the berries ghosting along the bramble and the beams grown rotten into the ground. The things we have seen, the sweet accidental parts of our lives stooping largely in their rough mattens. Where are we now? Somewhere near him, a stone unsettles itself and a beast in the blue light turns over. What sound do you make to find that? What symbol means nothing at all? Um, and one of Andrew's favorite books is um, David Copperfield. <laughs> I've never read David Copperfield. Um, uh, but I remember you coming to me and telling me your favorites. You were rereading re re it. And um, you, came, you came to me and said your favorite part in the book was when you got his key to his house. Mm. And uh, he was walking around town and feeling the key in his pocket. Um, so David Copperfield. No, no finer thing than to walk through town with the key of my house in my pocket, to stop to talk with women and men of all the easeful talk of cures and deaths, and all the while to know its nickel-backed winter light turning warm in my hand, the strike of the bolt stump, my footing exact, as though I could dream walk myself back to stand in the dark of the inner door. No answer save my own, then gently lever its weight toward the bright rooms. O oh, horde of the free life, of the sunlit, scattering plenty. Um, and I'll just read one last poem. It's, um, it was actually based on an exercise that I gave my pre writing class at UCC. Sally, you were in that class. Um, <laughs> and um, it was, was it, I don't know, was I saying, do something more cinematic or like, you know, and think of, an, of a scene like from a favorite movie and just describe, like just get into like what's there. And, and our favorite movie uh, is, I haven't seen it now in a long time, but um, Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was genuinely, wasn't it our, fa our favourite? It is, like, our favourite film. And, um, and uh, for those of you who don't know it, it's um, Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey, and they fall in love with their real opposites. And I don't know what happened in their relationship, but she went to a place where you could get your memory erased of, of the other person, and she did that, and he was so heartbroken that he went to get his memory of her erased. And about three quarters of the film is actually running through the memories, obviously starting with the bad ones, the more recent ones where the relationship is in turmoil, and then going back to the sweet ones. And at that point, they're actually running away from the blackness they want to remember. And she says at the end, remember me, maybe we can. And it comes from, the title comes from, um, uh, it's, it's um, 
Paul. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, how happy is the blameless vessel's lot, the world forgetting by the world forgot, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, each prayer answered, each wish resigned. Um, but this is called Note, and it's kind of based on, on, um, on that, something that happened in the movie. Note, if we become separated from each other this evening, try to remember the last time you saw me and go back and wait for me there. I promise I won't be very long, though I am haunted by the feeling that I might keep missing you with the noise of the city growing too loud and the day burning out so quickly. But let's just say it's as good a plan as any. Just once, let's imagine a word for the memory that lives beyond the body, that circles and sets all things alight. For I have singled you out from the whole world, and I would even as this darkness is falling, even when the night comes, when there are no more words, and the day comes, when there is no more light. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. multinational conglomerates that you never contribute anything to the culture of the city and we've got a small business like the farm gate putting so much of their heart and soul in, 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 in. <laughs> 